Good morning, it's Kurt from Simcoe Plastics coming to you from the Barrie Yacht Club on the North Shore of Campenfelt Bay in beautiful Barrie, Ontario, Canada. I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about a special project that I'm working on and it's quite apropos that I'm at the club today with boats behind me uh, because they all have one thing in common and that is they are made of fiberglass. And there are many, many boats out there that are coming to their end, coming to the end of their economic life and a question that has been uh, on many people's minds, uh, government, industry, um, and uh, at citizen level too, of course, what do we do with these boats uh, once they've reached the end of their economic life? It's not uncommon for a boat, once it's finished, to have its stainless hardware stripped out, uh, its engine, its, its other valuable components that can either be refurbished and sold on uh, on the second-hand market, much in the same way uh, an auto recycler handles car parts, um, or in the case of parts, uh, an engine failure, the engine isn't good, okay, the engine is torn down, it's sold for scrap metal. Th this isn't anything new. But the fiberglass boat hull pieces, such as I have here, what do we do with them? So, myself along with uh, my partner on this project, Ted Rankin, are involved uh, with a government-sponsored contract to examine what to do with fiberglass boat hulls. So um, Ted was able to secure a hull of uh, probably about a, a 19 foot power boat, something from the late 70s, early 80s, and he's documented the process of deconstructing the hull and what to do with it. And uh, he's given me a number of these approximately one foot square pieces. So my job in this, um, I, have, uh, I have approached a couple of companies about looking at how we tear this uh, hull down, how we break it down into smaller pieces and ultimately how we turn it into something along the lines of a relatively fine powder which has the fiberglass and the resin and we <coughs> excuse me <coughs> we get rid of any impurities uh, prior to that grinding down process I've also been in touch with a local cement company and they are quite interested excuse me <coughs> they are quite interested in looking at the uh, the ground product of this, the powder that would have the fiberglass and the, the resin, um, and trying to understand how that would impact a cement formulation. And that might be a very good additive for certain formulations that they do in certain applications. Time will tell. The challenge with this, of course, if you recall from previous videos, I talked about the difference between a thermoplastic and a thermoset. And the thermoplastic is what we typically recycle. It's the type of plastic you, could, you can melt, you can form, get a part, grind the part up, put it back in a machine, melt it, make another part, etc. And, and, and so it goes for many, many times before uh, the plastic, the physical properties break down and it, uh, it's no longer suitable. This is the thermoset. So fiberglass resin, I'm sure most of you who have done body work on your cars or, or maybe done a boat repair, you'll understand that you get your, your fiberglass cloth, you get a jar of resin and you get a little package of hardener and you have to mix everything together. You have so much working time and when it sets up, that's it, it's set up. Uh, so trying to recover a thermoset is far more challenging and probably using it in some type of uh, utility grade industrial filler is, is probably where this is gonna end up. I had originally thought about using the powder as a filler in plastics to emulate um, prime fiberglass and prime mineral filler, um, but in my opinion, now that I'm a little bit more along in the project, I don't believe that the purity of the materials involved would lend themselves to prime plastics production, even if it's to uh, displace prime fillers. I, I just don't think we'd have something that uh, that is good enough for that application. So in the weeks and uh, months ahead, we'll have this ground up, we'll have it tested, and uh, we'll find out if it's suitable enough to put out into the real world and, uh, and work safely. So until then, I will keep you posted. I think it's a neat project, and there are tens of thousands of boats that need to be reprocessed. It's, uh, it's a small step, but we're gonna stop some things going to landfill, and that's really what this is about. So until then, Please recycle everything, think about what you buy, ask if you need it before you buy it, and uh, as always, protect your playground. Until next time, take care, bye-bye.